I feel like today's holiday should be like every book lover, book nerd's favorite holiday because what better way, what better time to celebrate our love for books? Hello friends, happy Wednesday and happy National Book Lovers Day, yay! I am so excited for this holiday and I'm so very excited that Wednesday fell on this holiday so that I could just chat about books. I mean, obviously we do this every Wednesday, but I don't know, it just feels a little bit more special than usual knowing today is National Book Lovers Day. Just, ah, it makes me so very excited. But in case if you're not familiar with Top 5 Wednesday, in a nutshell, basically each week I answer a prompt using five books, but in this case I do manga to reflect the said prompt. And today's prompt is manga I wish was more popular. I mean, with all the books we readily have at our fingertips that we can pick up, there's just thousands and thousands and thousands. But what are some of those gems that we just wish more people were picking up, more people were talking about, and more people were reading? Today's prompt centers all around that. And I'm really, really excited because I was like, there are some underrated gems that I really feel like deserve just more attention and would love to see people pick up and hopefully really love and enjoy. So let's go ahead and dive in. For number one, I knew it was going to feature this one and that is From Far Away. I feel like this one is not quite as popular simply because it's out of print and the volumes, like I've gotten half the series now, but the other volumes that I need are usually like $75 and up and I don't think the majority of us are going to pay that price for a single volume of manga. <laughs> but I love this series. It is available digitally. I also did a video review. If you you like to check it out. I feel like this is such a unique izakai. It is a shoujo izakai, but the thing is, is like with a lot of the new izakai that we have been getting in English, usually the main character is very much overpowered. They're OP. Everything in this new world, they're already like excellent at. It doesn't take a lot of work, which there's nothing really wrong with that. I definitely don't mind that kind of izakai at times. But with From Far Away, what makes it stand out is Noriko, our main girl, when she is brought to this world, she does not know the language. She doesn't how to speak it. She can't communicate with anybody. And not only can she not communicate with anybody, but she is supposedly the awakening who is going to destroy and kill the sky demon. So she's wanted for her powers, but she can't communicate with anybody because she doesn't know the language. I was rereading volumes one and two this morning, and it is just so engaging. For a shoujo fantasy sci-fi, there is so much action in this. There's not a lot of action in volume one, but when I was rereading volume two, there is so much. Like we see Ezark, who is, I don't know if I can say it, he's a, let's just say he's the bad guy, so to speak, because of this prophecy and all these other things, but he is kicking butt in volume two and he looks amazing. And that like action continues through this whole series. And we really see Noriko grow as an individual. I think I said in my video review that she is like a damsel in distress, but she's not. And I think a few people got really upset that I said that and I didn't mean it as a knockdown to Noriko. Noriko does need safety often. She's not very powerful in the sense of physical strength, but she's not a damsel in distress where she's like, I need a man to come save me in every area of my life. No, we see in volume two, Noriko, she stands her ground when she is determined to do something or to try something. She gives her all and she learns in this series, and it's a wonderful part of this series, that we all have different strengths. We all have different abilities and none of those are less significant than someone else. So maybe Maybe Noriko needs physical saving often because she's not physically strong. But Noriko learns and realizes what her strengths are and that does not make her any less important compared to Izark who has all these amazing abilities and is very powerful. He's very handsome. I guess that's just an added bonus to him. But he has all of these things going for him in this world. While Noriko, people would say, you're really not that special. And she even battles and struggles with that. But she, again, comes to realize and it is so incredibly beautiful. It is a very powerful shoujo izakai that I would highly recommend. Again, it's available digitally, thankfully, and you might be able to find volumes for like $20 or less. It's really rare. I don't know if volume two is still in stock, but it is a beautiful, wonderful series that I, I love it so much. And I really wish it was more popular. I wish it was easier to find, that it wasn't so expensive to get physically because rereading it this morning physically was very rewarding and just reminded me why I love this series so much. So I felt like for National Book Lovers Day, it had to be number 
one because it needs more popularity. For number two, I talk about cat manga a lot. I talk about how my daughter loves cat manga, but what about a dog manga? I've got one for today. So for number two, I am saying even dogs go to other worlds, life in another world with my beloved hound. This only has one volume. Volume two comes out, I think next month. And it is so sweet. It is so sweet. If you are a dog lover fan and just love dogs or maybe just love animals, but you want some dog manga, this is a great one to try out. It is another izakai, but what makes this a unique Izakai is that our main guy, when he goes to this new world, he's reincarnated into it. His dog is also reincarnated into this world, and she is massive, as you can see on the cover. Their relationship is so wholesome and so really sweet. I really love how just his beloved hound came in this other world with him, how they're growing in this world. I mean, there wasn't, there's more of like a setting up in this first volume, but I really think going forward, it's going to be such a fun and special ride. I love so much just the relationship. I mean, there looks like there might be a little bit of a romance going on for the main character to be determined. I definitely ship it though, but I am just here again for this dog. I'm here for the pooch, I think as he calls her, and seeing just how they're going to use these fantasy abilities because I'm pretty positive he, the main guy, is very overpowered, but he doesn't yet realize it. But the people around him are like, nobody can do that in our world. And then having this giant dog on top of that, who's really sweet. I mean, that's like another OP ability that's in his pocket. So I highly recommend this one. The art is very cute and I love the expressions and I loved everything that just took place. It's a very sweet, casual slice of life volume that it was very enjoyable. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, please go check this one out because I feel like dog manga is always like on the low key end of things because the cat manga just overpowers it. And I feel a little bad because for number three, I'm actually saying a cat manga, my sister, the cat. I know I have talked about a lot of different cat manga. There's actually one in my right stuff cart that me and my daughter want to get because it looks super cute. I think it's called like the cat on the hero's lap and the hero can't go and fight bad guys because he's like, there's a cat on my lap and I can't move. It sounds so cute. And I'm, I'm really excited for that. But anyway, my sister, the cat, this is so precious. I was skimming through this this morning and I just forgot how cute and adorable this manga is. Their names sound really similar. So the cat here, her name, Neneko, but the guy here, her older brother is Nekota. And I always get them mixed up because I'm like, they have very similar letters and sounds. But basically this human man, he comes to live with this family of cats because I believe his mother passed away. And so this family of cats adopts him. It's his everyday life and shenanigans with his little sister who adores and loves him so very much. I really feel like when you're reading this manga, you are here for Neneko's expressions. You're here to see how much she admires and loves and looks up to her human brother and how she just wants to do everything with him. She wants to support him. She wants to make him happy. There were so many cute moments. Like, look at her little face. She's so cute. She's so cute. I'm bummed this is only three volumes. This is with a camera film filter because his friend was like, share me some pictures of Neneko. And he's like, oh, I don't have any. So they start taking pictures together with this filter and she's got all these funny, cute expressions. Though this one, she wasn't really happy with him because he's like, oh, let's do a cute one. And she's obviously thinking, I'm already cute, big brother. The mother and the dad are really great as well. But I have to say, one of my favorite side characters is a big cat brother and he has a human little brother. And he's like this really tough, Tough guy who doesn't seem to like really cute things. His brother right here, his brother here just wants to make his big brother happy because he loves his big brother so much. And the older cat brother who has like these suspicious vibes to him, he's like, I love you so much, little man. He's like, you look so cute. Of course, I'm so happy to be your brother. Their relationship is so cute. I'm like, I love it so much. I love it so much. This is a, another really happy manga, very slice of life. So don't look for like in this overarching plot because you're not going to find it 
it, but I feel like it's still really enjoyable because again of those expressions and just seeing how much Neneko loves her brother, how he's going to respond. I feel like volume two had a little bit more of an overarching plot where the chapters connected a little bit more. I'm really excited for volume three, even though I'm sad that it's only three volumes because this is definitely a series that's always a joy to read. I was very much influenced by my daughter and I just feel like more people need to know about it and pick it up and go experience the cat happiness because it is so very cute. For number four, so excited to talk about this one as well because I really love this manga. I recently chatted about it at a live stream. I think it was last week, I believe. But that is the fiance chosen by the ring. I was picking this up for some reason. I didn't remember why. I finally started reading. I think I read all four volumes or yeah, I think all four volumes, all three volumes this past January when I had COVID. It is so fluffy. If you need a very fluffy shoujo fantasy romance, this series is it. I was skimming through volume one and I was just like, oh my goodness, they're so adorable. They are so precious. I really love the couple. Title of this says it all because our main girl here, she loves embroidery. She goes to this ball to appreciate the embroidery and the dresses. Suddenly she's about to take a drink of like champagne. This ring just smacks her in her forehead and she's like, what in the world? Right here. And like, it wasn't like some kind of like light hit. Like this is a full fledged hit her really hard in the head. Like here's another good example. Like look how hard that ring hit her. And so Felix, our main hero, he comes up to her and he says, the ring has chosen my bride. The main girl, I forget her name right now, Aurora, is going to be my fiance, my bride. And she's like, um what is going on but it actually generally starts a not fake engagement but she's willing to sort of see where this goes she's like okay I will pretend to be your fiance because he's like please there's so many ladies who are wanting my hand in marriage if you could just pretend at least at these balls it would do me a huge favor but the thing is they start having feelings for each other and I love it so much it's so fluffy this does actually have a plot but it's very fluffy fantasy Felix has some magical powers Aurora has some powers and that's sort of one of the overarching plots is her discovering and realizing that she actually does have some magical ability. Not going to go into that because it's a really fun exploration of this series and actually her exploring and realizing really affects her engagement to Felix and how they're going to tackle this. I have not read the latest volume and I really need to because this is a series that I'm like I am going to do a video review on my channel. I really really love this series. It's just I was about to use the word fluffy but I've already said that twice now it's very sweet and wholesome like there is one moment though in season season two episode uh, not episode not season or episode this is not anime in volume two where the rival he does push himself up on Aurora thankfully nothing happens but it was a little bit weird because this is a really clean and lighthearted series so it was sort of surprising that suddenly that was woven in there but it's the only scene so just like as an FYI about that I would still strongly recommend this series it is the romance that I really really, really love where it's just all fluff, all cuteness. And so I need more people to read this one. It is so fun. And I feel like it's greatly underrated, though, even though the people I know who have read it really enjoy it because it's just a very lighthearted romance that you can sort of just pick up and just read it and be like, ah, I feel so much better. I feel very happy because that's literally how I feel after every single volume. For number five, this is not a fluffy manga and maybe it's just me being like to the hype train like I was with Alice in the Country of Hearts because I was like, oh, nobody's really read this series. Wrong. There have been so many people after I filmed my review and I posted it who have reached out saying, hey, look at my collection. Hey, look how much I love this manga. And I'm sort of wondering if this is the same case. But for number five, I'm going to say not your idol. I just picked this series up. Well, not series. I picked up this volume used this weekend. I finally picked it up. I've been wanting to pick it up for like a really long time. But my friend Bo, he had did his manga collection video and he recommended it when I think I commented on his video. And I was like, you know what? When we went to Second and Charles this past weekend, I was like, I'm going to pick it up. I really appreciate when my friends Bree had given me a trigger warning. And I do really appreciate that because this is a heavier topic manga. However, with that said, it does have heavier topics. This is what I wanted from Oshinoko. I have tried a little bit of Oshinoko and I liked it, but I didn't feel like 
liked it enough to continue it, not because it was bad. It was just, it was too intense for me. And this has some intensity as well, but this was the idol manga that I wanted Oshinoko to be. What I really liked about this, and I feel, let me pause that, I feel like this series is not very popular because there's only two volumes available in English and Japanese because the series is on hiatus. And it is such a bummer because I feel like this volume is so eye-opening. And I feel like because there's a lot of, I'm hesitant to say like a lot of feminist movement right now, but I feel like with the Barbie movie being out and just a lot of attention coming to women, the respect that a lot of women are really wanting and just not just respect like in say like a workplace, but physical respect, like respect those boundaries. Like don't be doing things to women that nobody needs to do to any kind of person. And so I feel like this story really hit me really strongly with all of the different things that are just happening. Like so with the Barbie movie, women coming out, sharing their stories and just the empowerment, the empowerment of women right now, I feel like has been really touching me. And so when it came to this volume, there's not necessarily woman empowerment, but it's about this young woman who was an idol and she is assaulted at a handshake event. Because of that, she decides she doesn't want to be an idol anymore. She cuts her hair, like her hair was super long and she disguises herself as a boy, but she's still really reeling from that assault and what happened to her and how it has changed her life. And we dive into that story and how she's very leery of men. And, and there's a lot of conversation about, for example, there's a scene where there is a woman's only train. Women and men have very much different opinions on it. And they were talking about how this one person got groped like a woman did. And some guys, and even some of the ladies, like, it's not that big of a deal, which I was so triggered. I was so angry at that scene. When I wrote my review, I was like, I have to respectfully move on because I was livid at this one character who treated this circumstance like it's not that big of a deal. Like, mm. I had some words for that character. But I feel like there's just a lot of great conversation that really makes you think. And so I felt like this was a really strong and impactful volume. Definitely was a little bit triggering. I do agree with my friend. And I think you should be like aware of that. All of those things are addressed. And I'm really curious where this series is going to go. I definitely plan to pick up volume two. I know it's on hiatus. I don't know if we'll ever come off hiatus. But how this volume impacted me, I need to know at least what I can read where this is going, especially with that cliffhanger that it ended on. Maybe I'm just late to the hype, supposed hype train here, and a lot of people have already read this and enjoyed it, but I do wish it was more popular because even if a lot of people, or even if some people don't necessarily love this manga, I think it creates excellent conversation. It reminds me of My Girlfriend's Child, where, I mean, I know a lot of people really love this, including myself. This was my favorite read of last month, or volume two was, but it's not like this lighthearted, happy story, but it really approaches a topic that's not talked about much. I feel like this Not Your Idol does something similar where these aren't lighthearted stories, but it creates conversation. And I appreciate manga that does that open conversation between people about topics that maybe are taboo or that we're not going to really talk about publicly. Like those things need to be addressed. And I hope that our main girl heals from the trauma that she has experienced because my heart broke for her of every thing that she's feeling. Also, the art is very, very beautiful. I'm so looking forward to reading the next volume. I have it in my cart on Right Stuff and will be picking up. Again, sorry if this is popular, but I'm just late in actually reading it. For my honorable mention, I was going to do it sooner, but since it's a digital manga, I decided to do it as an honorable mention, but I love this manga. I knew I was going to feature it this week, and that is My Darling Next Door. I love this manga. It is an age gap manga, but I feel like it is so wonderfully done. It really reminded me of my own love story of marrying my husband and because we were in an age gap marriage and how a lot of feelings that Rikari, I think I'm saying her name right, but how she felt, our main girl felt at the beginning is really similar and reflects my own. And I was really excited because my friend Danielle shared that she recently read it. And when she shared about how much she loved it, I was like, yes, this is definite. We are featuring this manga today because the artwork is absolutely beautiful. I love the covers, but I really, really love love the romance. This manga, I feel like if you're hesitant of age gaps in general, but want to see one that's really wonderfully done, and it's a very clean and the respect of boundaries and how the parents are involved, this series is it. I so wish it was available physically because I've re I actually read it twice. I read the manga one time and then literally the next day, I went back and reread the whole series. It is very special to me. I love the characters. I love, again, just 
how the romance unfolds. I gush about that whole series in a video review that I have. I cannot recommend it enough. It is just so wonderfully done and Rika is a joy to follow. Like she is, a, is it called a gyru? I love her. I love her bright personality, her bright clothing and how peppy and happy she is. She is a very wonderful main character and I just, I love that manga so much and I really wish it was more popular. It's probably not because yes, it does have the age gap tag, but mainly I think because it's digital only. So, but I would deeply recommend it. I love it so very much. And that my friends wraps up my picks for manga that I wish was more popular in honor of National Book Lovers Day. But I would love to hear from you friends. What are some books or manga that you wish were more popular? I would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.